Good morning, children. Happy Easter to all of you. I'm so happy that you came back to hear the wonderful and joyful Easter story. So today I'm all dressed up in my Easter outfit. How about you? Are you all dressed up in your Easter outfit too? I bet you are. I sure miss seeing you in Sunday school. I loved seeing all of you all dressed up and ready for our Easter egg hunt. I really miss that. But I'm sure you're having a wonderful Easter at home, and I am really excited to read to you our Bible story. Today, we'll be reading a story that has a very special happy ending. How many of you like stories with happy endings? I do. They always make me feel good. Well, the story and the ending is special, the one that I'll read to you today, because it is written in our Holy Bible. So I want you to get comfortable while I read to you um, our happy ending story. So listen carefully. I'm going to be reading from three different locations in our Bible. So if you want to read along with me, you may. You'll have to get your Bible quickly though. You're gonna to need to look it up in the New Testament. We're gonna read from Mark chapter 16, one through eight and then Luke 24, 1 through 8, and then John 20, verse 1 through 9. So listen as I read to you our happy ending Bible story, okay? So let me get my glasses on. That always helps. <laughs> so this one is from um, Mark 16, Verse 1 through 8. After the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene, Salome, and Mary, the mother of James, brought some spices to put on Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just as the sun was coming up, they went to the tomb. On their way, they were asking one another, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance for us? But when they looked, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away. And it was a huge stone. The women went into the tomb, and on the right side, they saw a young man in a white robe sitting there, and they were alarmed. The, mad, the man said, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus from Nazareth, who was nailed to a cross. God has raised him to life, and he isn't here. You can see the place where they put his body. Now go and tell his disciples, and especially Peter, that he will go ahead, that he will go ahead of you to Galilee, and you will see him there, just as he told you. And when the women ran from the tomb, they were confused and shaking all over. They were too afraid to tell anyone what had happened. That's the story of Jesus Alive. Now let me read to you from the book of Luke. This is Luke 24, 1 through 8. Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, carrying the spices that they had prepared. And when they found the stone rolled away from the entrance, they went inside. But they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus, and they did not know what to think. Suddenly, two men in shining white clothes stood beside them. The women were afraid and bowed to the ground. But the men, the men said, Why are you looking in the place of the dead for someone who is alive? Jesus isn't here. He has been raised from the dead. Remember that while he was still in Galilee, he told you. He told you the Son of Man will be handed over to sinners who will nail him to a cross. But three days later, he will rise to life. Then they remembered what Jesus said. Now this is what we find in the book of John, chapter 20, verse 1 through 9. Let's listen to what John says. Again, it's titled, Jesus is Alive. 
On Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran to Simon Peter and to Jesus' favorite disciple and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. They ran side by side until the other disciple ran faster than, than Peter and got there first. He bent over and saw the strips of the linen cloth lying inside the tomb, but he did not go in. And when Simon Peter got there, he went into the tomb and saw the strips of cloth. He also saw the piece of cloth that they had used to cover Jesus' face. It was rolled up and in a place by itself. The disciple who got there first then went inside the tomb, and when he saw it, he believed. At that time, Peter and the other disciple did not know that the scriptures said Jesus would rise to new life. So the two of them went back to the other disciple. So that's our Bible lesson for this morning. It's a wonderful story, right? I promised you a happy ending, didn't I? We together went through Holy Week, beginning with Palm Sunday, then the Last Supper, and Good Friday. And the events that took place were, were sad, weren't they? But this morning, we can rejoice because we know that Jesus has risen. He has risen indeed. Can you say that with me? We always say this on Easter morning. Say it with me. Jesus has risen. He has risen indeed. Jesus lives again. He has risen from death. So during Easter, we see lots of things that remind us of springtime. And if we look carefully at them, we can also see the Easter story. Let me take my hat off. I don't need that anymore. I'll wear it later, though. So on my table, you can see some of the things that we might see at, at Easter time right? So we have daffodils. How many of you have daffodils in your yard or around your house? They're beautiful. How many of you have eggs? How many of you had an Easter egg hunt this morning? I missed that. Well, an Easter egg reminds us of Jesus's death and resurrection, doesn't it? Do you remember when we learned about this? If you look inside, what do you find? It's empty, right? And in the Bible story of Jesus, the tomb was empty. So the Easter egg reminds us of the tomb. And inside, it's empty. I love that. So you can remember that when you do your Easter egg hunt, that the egg reminds us, can remind us of the resurrection, the empty tomb. It also reminds us of new life, right? So um, although they don't come from the eggs we eat, from farmers, um, baby chicks come from eggs, and they are new life also. So, you know, when we plant flowers in the fall, we plant them with the hope that in the springtime, the flowers will bloom. So spring flowers remind us of new life also, don't they? Just like these daffodils, they were planted in the fall. Let me get one for you. You can see, maybe you can see, that they're bulbs. See? So in the fall, we plant the bulbs. There are no flowers yet. They're just the bulbs. We plant them with the hope that in springtime, they will blossom. They'll come up from the winter soil, the hard winter soil. They'll come up and they'll bring forward these beautiful spring flowers. Daffodils and the, and the tulips do that at Easter time, right? And we all have them around. And they remind us of new hope and the hope that spring brings us and the, the hope that Jesus brings us and the Easter story that brings us such hope and such joy. So, I am so glad that you came with me during this Easter journey. We did go through some tough times listening to what happened to Jesus. And like I said, 
we had to go through that in order to get to Easter, in order to feel the joy of Easter, knowing that Jesus had risen. So we're going to do a little craft here this morning that actually we've done this in Sunday school before. And um, what you need is some biscuits. Just plain, ordinary biscuits. Maybe you can make the biscuits yourself, but this morning I just have um, these um, already made biscuits. So you'll need that, and you'll need a marshmallow, and you'll need some spices. Now, inside this container, I have spices of cinnamon and nutmeg and of cloves. Now, these spices are similar to the spices that Mary Magdalene and her friends were taking to the tomb to wrap Jesus' body and to put the spices around Jesus' body. That's what they did. And that's what Mary Magdalene and her friend were going to do that morning when they went to the tomb and they found it empty. So, I wish you could smell this. It smells really good. So when you're at home, make a mixture of cinnamon and nutmeg and cloves and some sugar. And um, you'll be able to use this for this little craft. But the spices remind us of what they may have put on, what they were going to put on Jesus's body. So I'm actually going to attach the recipe for you so you can do it at home. And... Um, you can show everybody else what happens when you do this. Now, hold on a minute. I have to open it up. This is always fun to do. He likes to do this. It's sort of like a jack-in-the-box thing, right? You bang it on the side. Ah! And it opens up. Hmm. So here we have a whole lot of biscuits. I'm just going to take one. And I've washed my hands already, so I have clean hands. And when you do this, you need to do that, too. So what you're going to do is take a biscuit and you're going to kind of pull it out a little bit just to make it a little bit bigger and even a little flatter. So get it to be like about that. Big enough that it'll go around our marshmallow. So you'll take your marshmallow, you'll put it inside your biscuit, and then you're going to seal up that marshmallow. And you do that by putting the um, dough all over that marshmallow and then pinching the sides like that. Make sure it's completely closed. This represents the tomb, the tomb where Jesus was buried. And the marshmallow represents Jesus, the body of Jesus. So inside this tomb is where um, the marshmallow is and it reminds us of where Jesus was buried in the tomb. So then you take these wonderful spices and you roll the dough in the spices, covering it really, really well with all of the spices till it looks really covered like, like this, okay? It's fully covered with the cinnamon and nutmeg and cloves. Oh, it smells so good. Mm, it's gonna smell even better when you bake it. So then you're going to put it on a tray, a baking tray. You're going to do more than one. I would suggest you do the whole roll and you can show your family. Or maybe you do it as a family and you'll see what happens. So you're going to bake this in the oven at 425, I think for eight minutes. I'll send you the recipe. You're going to bake it until it's done. And when it's done, you can take it out of the oven. You're going to put it aside and just let it cool for a good five minutes. Then once it's cool, you're going to take like a toothpick and you're going to open up the biscuit. You're gonna take, you know, like where the where you've pressed it together. You're going to take a, um, a toothpick or maybe a fork, something, just to loosen it up. And you're gonna make a hole there so that you can look inside the tomb and see what you find. You'll find an empty tomb. Just like our Bible story, when Mary went to put the spices on Jesus' body and they found the tomb was empty. This will remind you of that Bible, that part of the Bible story. 
So I hope you'll do this as a family, and um, it will remind you of our Bible story. Do you remember doing this in Sunday school? Some of you did it when, in the Cooking Learning Center with Miss Sonia and Miss Renee. Do you remember? Well, do it at home, and I think you'll have a really good time making it together and showing your friends and your family who come for your Easter dinner maybe what happened. You'll teach them the Bible story. I love it. So, everybody, thank you for coming to Sunday School and sharing Easter morning with me. I'm going to wear my Easter bonnet, and I'm going to have some family over for dinner later on. But I just want to say thank you so much for coming, and I wish all of you a very, very happy Easter. Remember to do all the things you need to do to stay safe and to keep everybody else safe, too. Be kind to everyone. Be kind to all of God's creation. Take care, and I will see you soon. Come back next week because I am going to read you a really neat story, and I'll have a gift for you, too. It's another story that will, that will remind you of Easter, but it's not the Easter story. I'm not going to tell you anymore because you have to come back next Sunday and hear the story that I'm going to read and pick up the little gift that I'll have for you also. Okay? Happy Easter, everyone! Jesus has risen! He has risen indeed. Bye, everyone. See you next time. Bye!